Sutra. If it were actually in front of you, it would be something you would actually see, and then the seeing at sense would have a location. It wouldn't be that there is no evidence of it. Commentary. If it were actually in front of you, if it really were the case that the seeing is in front of you, it would be something you would actually see. You should see the seeing, but you haven't seen the seeing. So what you have said is wrong. If you actually could see it, then the seeing at sense would have a location. To be in front of you would be to have a location. It wouldn't be that there is no evidence of it. If there, the seeing is in front of you, what indication is there of it that makes you think it is there? Sutra, now as you sit in the Chatter Grove, you look about everywhere at the grove, the ponds, the holes as far as the sun and moon, with the Ganges River before you. Now, before my lion seat, point out these various appearances. What is dark is the groves. What is bright is the sun. What is obstructing is the walls. What is clear is emptiness, and so on, from the grasses and trees to the finest particle of hair. Their sizes vary, and since they all have appearances, none cannot be located. Commentary. This section of text is spoken to break up Ananda's attachment. Now, as you see in the Chatter Grove, you look about everywhere in the grove, the ponds, the holes, as far as the sun and moon, with the Ganges River before you. Sitting in the prince were Victor's grove, among small small pools of water here in the submarine abode, looking upward to the palaces of the sun and moon, and facing the Ganges River. Now, before my lion seat, point out these various appearances. With your hand, point to these various forms, these various shapes and appearances. What is dark is the groves. What the blazes in the in darkness are the groves of trees. What is bright is the sun. The blazes where the sun is shining. What is obstructing is the walls, which impede and do not allow things to go through. What is clear is emptiness, which goes through and offers no obstructions, and so on, from the grasses and trees to the to the finest particle of hair. I have been speaking generally, and so on, includes everything in between that has not been mentioned, from blades of grass to the finest particle of hair. Didn't I just say, on the tip of a hair, the lens of the Buddha appear, sitting in a fine mold of dust, one turns the great Dharma wheel, a particle that is a fine mold of dust and a strand of fine hair, represent the very smallest possible things. The sizes vary, and since they all have appearances, none cannot be located. Big or small, all these things have a form and appearance, and everything which has form and appearance can be pointed out. Now which among them would you say your seeing is? Which thing is your seeing? The thing has been discussed again and again, but Ananda still does not understand, and so the seeing is still be being explained. These are the ten manifestations of seeing, ten kinds of distinctions made to point out that the seeing is neither produced nor extinguished, and that it does not come or go. Actually, Ananda had perhaps already understood, but on behalf of living beings, he has requested Dharma, since many living beings still do not understand. As he investigated the same nature with Shakyamuni Buddha, it was as if they were reciting and played line by line, each in harmony with the other. Sutra, if it is certain that your seeing is in front of you, then with your hand you should with certain certainty point out what the thing is. Ananda, if emptiness is the seeing, then how can it remain empty since it has already become your seeing? If a thing is the seeing, how can it be external to you as an object since it has already become your seeing? Commentary, if it is certain that 
your thing is in front of you if you definitely want to say that your thing is a thing that appears before you then certainly it is like an object which has been placed there then with your hand you should with certainty point out what the thing is if it is in front of you you should be able to point right to it well hurry up and speak but ananda did not make a sound why he wasn't in control he wanted to bring up another point to discuss but he hadn't thought of one yet so he was uh, still tongue-tied Ananda, if emptiness is a thing, then how can it remain empty since it has already become your thing? You ought to know this. Don't you understand yet? At this point, the Buddha gets nervous. Basically, the Buddha hasn't any fire, but by now it seems likely that his fire rose up. If emptiness is a thing, it should not have the name emptiness. Where has emptiness itself gone off to? Where there is seeing, there should not be emptiness. If your seeing is located there, emptiness should not be there. So which is the emptiness? Emptiness or seeing? If a thing is the seeing, how can it be external to you as an object since it has already become your seeing? Perhaps you say it's not that my seeing is the emptiness. It's rather that all the seeing all the things I see before me are my seeing. Well then, what are things? If things are your seeing, they should not be called things. If they aren't things, what are? Speak up. The Buddha confronts him directly and presses him to answer. Sutra, you can cut through and peel away the myriad appearances to the finest degree in order to distinguish and bring forth the essential brightness and pure wonder of the source of seeing, pointing it out and showing it to me from among all these things so that it is perfectly clear beyond any doubt. Commentary You can cut through and peel away the myriad appearances to the finest degree, make special use of your brain to think it over and investigate clearly and in minute detail so that you don't speak casually and confusedly again. Don't just answer me without a moment's hesi hesitation. Now you should exhaust your brain power to investigate this question. Cut through the migrant appearances, distinguish among the appearances of the 10,000 things as if you were cutting through them and dissecting them with a knife and peel them away as if you were using a knife to take the skin off bit by bit. To distinguish and bring forth the essential brightness and pure wonder of the source of seeing. Clearly distinguish the essential brightness which everyone can see and understand. The most pure and most wonderful source of the seeing that can see. Pointing it out and showing it to me from among all these things. You tell me to indicate clearly which is your seeing and which are things so that it is perfectly clear beyond any doubt can you make this distinction try it out sutra ananda said from where i am now in this many storied lecture hall as far as the distant ganges river and the sun and moon overhead all that i might raise my hand to point to all that i indulge my eyes in seeing are all things they are not the same World honored one, it is as the Buddha has said, not merely myself, who am a Shravaka of the first stage, who still has outflows, but even Bodhisattvas cannot break open and reveal among the myriad appearances which are before them, an essence of seeing which has a special self-nature apart from all things. The Buddha said, so it is, so it is. Commentary Ananda said, in answer to the Buddha's instruction, from where I am now in this many-storied lecture hall, the lecture hall had two stories as far as the distant Ganges River. When I look into the distance, I see the Ganges River and the sun and moon overhead, all that I might raise my hand to point to, all that I indulge my eyes in seeing, 
own are things they are not seeing. When the eyes are lowered or closed, they are stored away, but to open them up wide is to indulge them. Anything that I see when I open them and indulge them, anything that can be pointed to is a thing. It is not the seeing essence. Nothing can be shown to be the seeing. Won't honored one it is, as the Buddha has said. It is like the doctrine which the Buddha explained before, namely that not merely myself, who am I a am a Shravaka of the first stage who still has outflows, but even Bodhisattvas cannot break open and reveal among the nine red appearances which are before them an essence of seeing which has a special self nature apart from all things. I am a Shravaka who has just begun to study, a South hero who has attained only the first fruition and whose power of spiritual penetration is quite small. Therefore, I still have outflows. Since one becomes a being without outflows, only upon attaining the fourth fruition of Ahatri. But the Buddha said that not even at the level of a Bodhisattva can one break open the myriad appearances before one as if one were to cut them open with a knife and find the seeing essence among them. For your seeing nature is not a thing, and you cannot locate it as a thing among the myriad things. The Buddha said, so it is, so it is. This time you have spoken correctly. That is the way it is. He said it twice. Correct, correct. The Buddha emphasizes the point by repeating himself. This shows that he very much agrees with Ananda's opinion. He said, now your view is not mistaken. It is not like the mistakes you made before. Sutra, the Buddha said further to Ananda, It is as you have said, there is no thing as sense to be found, existing separately among all the things. Therefore, all the things you point to are things and none is the thing. Commentary, the Buddha will ask another question in order to reveal the thing as sense. The Buddha said further to Ananda, It is as you have said, there is no thing as sense to be found, existing separately among all the things. There is no special thing that is the seeing. Therefore, all the things you point to are things, and none is a seeing. Among all the things, everything you point to is a thing. None of these things is a seeing essence. Sutra, now I will tell you, you and the first come one seat in the Jeta Grove, and look again at the groves and gardens, as far as the sun and moon and at all the various different appearances and it is certain that the same essence is not among whatever you point to you can go ahead and reveal what among these things is not your seeing commentary now i will speak another doctrine for you now i will tell you you and the first common seed in the jetta grove ananda and the buddha and everyone else are sitting in the Jester Grove and look again at the groves and gardens. As far as the sun and moon, the flower gardens, everything that can be seen from here to the sun and moon in the sky above, at all the various different appearances, and it is certain that the seeing essence is not among whatever you point to. You can go ahead and reveal what among these things is not your seeing which among all these things is not your seeing. The Buddha stroking, you say. He said before that things were not the seeing, and now he asks Ananda to tell him which things are not the seeing. That's how the Suragama Sutra is. If you don't understand this place in the text clearly, you will become confused. It said before that the things were not the seeing, and now it says they are the seeing, you say. Now it asks which aren't the seeing, but before it said none of them was the seeing. Sutra Ananda said, I see clearly all over this Jetta Grove, and I do not know what in the midst of it is not my seeing. Commentary Ananda knew earlier that they were not his seeing, but now the Buddha has asked him which are not his seeing. He is confused again. He doesn't understand the question again. 
Ananda said, I see clearly all over this jata grove. I can see everywhere all around this grove of trees a prince will be tall. And I do not know what in the midst of it is not my seeing. Which isn't my seeing, now I don't know. As soon as the Buddha asked that last question, Ananda got confused again. Thus, the Suragama Sutra is just confusion upon confusion until the very end, when it is all made clear. So don't be afraid of confusion and say, I don't understand, I don't know what is going on now. The Buddha is just turning the principle back and forth, explaining it over and over. It is a thorough investigation of the principle. He brings up one doctrine and says, Do you think that's right? He explains that it isn't right and he brings up another doctrine and says, Do you think that's wrong? And he shows how that too is not correct. It is simply to reveal the principle. What is not the thing? The Buddha asks, Speak up and tell me. Ananda says, I don't know which isn't the seeing. Now I'm confused again. Sutra. Why, if trees are not the seeing, why do I see trees? If trees are the seeing, then what becomes of trees? The same is true of everything up to and including emptiness. If emptiness is not the seeing, why do I see emptiness? If emptiness is the seeing, then what becomes of emptiness? Commentary. Why, if trees are not the seeing, why do I see trees? Ananda says that if the trees are not the seeing, then he wouldn't see the trees. So he can't say that the trees are not the seeing. If trees are the seeing, then what becomes of trees? If I were to say the trees are the seeing, then where would the trees have gone off to? Originally, the trees were simply trees, but now he is saying that they are the seeing. And so now he can't find a name for them. As for myself, I would just say they were wood. The same is true of everything up to and including emptiness. Trees are by nature things with form. But it is not only true of things which have an appearance. It is the same with emptiness and of all the things in between, which he doesn't mention by name because there would be no time to explain them all. It is the same with my explanation of the sutra. To lecture the entire sutra in three months means that many doctrines within it must go unspoken. If emptiness is not the seeing, why do I see emptiness? My seeing of emptiness is a seeing. If I say that emptiness is not the seeing, then why do I see emptiness? If emptiness is the seeing, then what becomes of emptiness? If it is the seeing, how can it also be called emptiness? So I don't know how this doctrine is to be explained. Now Ananda has a mouth but finds it difficult to speak. Sutra, as I consider it again and review the subtlest aspects of the myriad appearances, none is not my seeing. Commentary As I consider it again, Ananda has once again taking hold of his conscious mind that makes distinctions. Earlier, he constantly trotted out the sixth mind consciousness to debate with the Buddha, and now he has brought it out again. So he says, I am thinking again, and I reveal the subtlest of space of the mind that appearances. I think about them in many detail. I think it over and over, backwards and forwards, up and down, and I think I have reached it. In the subtlest aspects of the mind red appearances, none is not my seeing. All alike are the seeing. None is not the seeing. Every single thing is the seeing, which is to say, I see them after all. Sutra, the Buddha said, so it is, so it is. Commentary, the Buddha certified him again. Ah, what you say is correct. That is the way it is. You understand what I mean. The Buddha was happy and said, So it is, so it is. What do all of you say? Ultimately, what is the seeing and what are the things? Are the things the seeing or not? Sutra. Then all in the great assembly who has not reached the stage 
before uh, beyond the learning was stunned upon hearing these words of the Buddha and could not perceive where the meaning began or ended. They were agitated and taken aback at the same time, having lost what they had adhered to. Commentary Everyone heard this dialogue and heard that the same body in a, is a thing and is not a thing, then which is it? All the opinions which everyone had held before no longer held up. Then all the, in the great assembly who had not reached the stage beyond learning. Bodhisattvahood is called the stage beyond learning. The fourth version of Ahaship is also called the stage beyond learning. There were many in the Suragama assembly who had not yet been certified as having attained the fourth version of Ahaship. They were at the first version, the second version, or the third version, the positions with something left to study. They were stunned upon hearing these words of the Buddha. When the Buddha said it was the thing and then said it was not the thing, saying it was a thing and then saying it was not a thing, investigating back and forth like that, they didn't understand, they were stunned. They had eyes but yet could not see. They had ears and yet could not hear. They couldn't perceive anything at all. I give you an example. When people are confused by a ghost, they don't know anything at all. They forget everything that went on before. However, this is only an example. Don't think that the people in the Suragama assembly were utterly confused by a ghost. They weren't. I just said they were like people who had been confused by a ghost. And now I say they were not like people who have been confused by a ghost. That's like saying seeing and things are one and then saying that they are not one. That's the same principle. They were stunned and could not perceive where the meaning began or ended. They did not know where this doctrine began or what it would be like in the end result. What is being talked about? They wondered. They didn't understand. They were agitated and taken aback at the same time, having lost what they had adhered to. Everyone was afraid. Their hearts pounded as if a rabbit was jumping around inside. They couldn't believe what they'd heard. All the opinions they had held before had been rendered invalid and destroyed. It was as if they had lost all the treasures which they previously possessed, and so they were trying to figure out where to go to find them. Should they notify the authorities? Should they call the police? In those days, there probably weren't any policemen. The, the things they had lost, moreover, were invisible. So even if they called the police, the police would be helpless. They wouldn't be able to find them. Sutra, the first common knowing, they were anxious and uneasy in spirit, let pity rise in his heart as he consoled Ananda and everyone in the great assembly. Good pupil, what the unsurpassed drama king says is true and real. He speaks things as they are. He does not deceive. He does not lie. He is not Maskari Goshaliputra with his four kinds of non-dying theories that are deceptive and confusing. You should consider this attentively. It is no disgrace to pity or to implore. Commentary. When the Buddha saw that the great assembly was agitated, he gave rise to compassion in his heart and took pity on everyone. Ah, you people are truly pitiable. The first come one, knowing they were anxious and uneasy in spirit, let pity rise in his heart as he consoled Ananda and everyone in the great assembly. He knew that their spirits were not at peace, so he compassionately gave a little of a gift of fearlessness. He said, None of you should be frightened. I will now speak to you. Good people, the Buddha addressed everyone in the great assembly as good children. Good children, listen carefully. Don't be rambunctious. Now I will tell you what the unsurpassed Dharma King says. What the Buddha says is true and real. What he says is real, really so. You should have no doubts about that. There is a dis 
decided principle in what I said earlier that the thing is a thing and is not a thing. I am truly and really telling you something reliable. I am not cheating you. He speaks things as they are. What I say is in accord with the principle. I rely on the principle in expressing my doctrines. It is impossible for it not to be in accord with the principle. He does not deceive. He does not lie. He does not say deceptive or untrue things. He is not Maskari Goshaliputra. Maskari is a Sanskrit name which is interpreted to mean not seeing the way. His mother's name was Goshali. Putra means son of Maskari. Goshali Putra is one of the six masters of external paths. He was called not seeing the way because he did not understand the way. He could not see it and could not walk it. All he did was traverse a confused way. He ran around with his eyes closed and eventually he walked right into the sea where he drowned. It was because he did not see the way. That is what I think. Several thousand years later, it is for certain the salt water was very uncomfortable. It was not as comfortable as drinking wine or drinking pure water. Once he had drunk the salt water of the sea, it is likely that no doctor could call him. With his four kinds of non-dying theories that are deceptive and confusing, what did he say? It is both changeable and constant. Things both change and are permanent. It is both defined and pure. It is both clean and unclean. It is both produced and extinguished. It gets born and dies. It both increases and decreases. These are his four theories. Originally, the Buddha said, it is neither produced nor extinguished, but Maskari said, it is both produced and extinguished. His theory is off by just that much. The Buddha said, everything is unmoving. Unmoving it of course with conditions. It of course with conditions but does not move. But Maskari said, it neither changes nor it is constant. Mascari's fairies are just talking about talking out of both sides of his mouth. He says one thing has principle and also says its opposite has principle. And right down the line, he is an indirect opposition to the doctrine the Buddha explained. So the Buddha refers to his four kinds of non-dying as deceptive and confusing theories. Deceptive means that they go to the other extreme and in so doing confused people, but his theories are not correct, they are wrong. To reassure them, the assembly, the Buddha says that his doctrines are not like the confused and deceptive theories propounded by Maskari. You should consider this attentively. You should think about this in detail. It is no disgrace to pity you or to implore. Don't worry. Don't be afraid. Don't be sad. Pity refers to what the Buddha expressed. I am very sympathetic toward you. Implore refers to what those in the Great Assembly were doing when they looked up to so the Buddha's compassionate countenance as he consoled them.